Hello, this is Mr. Philippeck, and today's quick little video review is going to be on complete dominance. And I've kind of called this video series the degrees of dominance. But today we're going to focus just on complete, or what I like to call simple dominance. Now, simple dominance means that one allele is going to determine the phenotype, or what the organism looks like. And so the heterozygous is going to show the dominant phenotype. Remember that the heterozygous has one dominant allele and one recessive allele. And so with simple dominance, or simple Mendelian dominance, um, anybody who's heterozygous is automatically going to show the dominant phenotype. And so let's say we have this little example here, and we're going to look at eye color. And so big B is going to equal brown eyes, little b is going to equal blue eyes, because brown eyes is dominant over blue. And let's say we want to cross somebody who's heterozygous for brown eyes with someone who has blue eyes. Well, here is our heterozygous brown-eyed individual. And on the left here, we're going to put our blue-eyed. Now remember, we don't have to say homozygous for blue eyes because the only way to get blue eyes is to inherit both recessive alleles. And if we work out the Punnett square here, you see here that we have a 50-50 chance of getting brown versus blue. And I've color-coded it for you uh, just to make it a little easier. And if you notice that all the brown-eyed individuals are going to be heterozygous, whereas the blue-eyed individuals, obviously we don't have to say homozygous or heterozygous because we know in order to have blue eyes, you must receive both recessive alleles. So if you were asked to figure out the probability of a brown-eyed individual with this cross, we would look here and we have one brown eye here, two brown eyes there. We have two chances out of four or we can break that down to one half or say that we have a 50% chance of getting somebody with brown eyes. The same thing applies for people with blue eyes because we have one blue eye here, one blue eye here. You get a 50-50 chance. Now that doesn't mean that if we have four children, two of them are going to be brown, two of them are going to be blue, but it just means we have a 50% chance of achieving that. And so if given enough offspring, the laws of probability generally prevail. Well, let's say we have this problem here, and it says cross a homozygous brown-eyed individual with a blue-eyed one. And it says, what is the probability of getting a blue-eyed child in the F2 generation? Well, the first thing we need to do is set up the parental generation. And that is the first two parents that we see here. So here we have our homozygous brown-eyed individual crossed with a blue-eyed. And when we work out the Punnett square, we notice that we get 100% brown eyes. Now these folks here all constitute up the F1 generation. And so if we have to get all the way to the F2 generation, we're going to have to pick just two of these individuals and then cross them. And so when we do that, you see here that all of a sudden we get three brown-eyed individuals and one blue-eyed individual. Now getting back to our original question, it says what is the probability of getting somebody with blue eyes? Well right down here, here's our blue-eyed individual and so we have one chance out of four, or 25%. And this is the answer to the question. But with genetics problems, we can ask a whole slew of different types of questions. We can say, what's the probability of getting a brown-eyed child in the second generation? And, you know, to answer that question here, you know, we'd simply just count up the brown-eyed children, one, two, three, and say we have a three out of four, or 75%. Now, to take it one step further, if you want to really get advanced, we could ask a question simply of saying, what is the probability of the brown-eyed children that the brown-eyed child is going to be heterozygous or carry the trait for blue eyes? Well, to worry about that, we're not even going to worry about the blue-eyed individual. We're going to look at the three brown-eyed people, and so the total possibilities is three, and then how many of them are heterozygous? We have one, we have two. So we have a two-thirds chance that if the child is brown eyes, that they're going to be heterozygous. Now that's about as advanced as it gets. And I hope this little simple review on simple dominance helps you ace any type of genetics problem where they talk about simple dominance. And as always, thanks for listening.